This happened a few days ago when I was at the airport waiting to board my flight. I had my Mickey Mouse Beats headphones. I'm a kid at heart, while I was doing some furniture shopping on my laptop. The entitled mother and entitled kid come walking over. The kid starts pointing at my headphones and goes, Oh, I like those. Mommy, I want them. The entitled mother walks up to me. Hey, kid, my son wants your headphones, so give them to him. Note, I am 22. Me. Sorry, ma'am. I paid a lot of money for these, and I won't give them out for free. I'm sure one of the stores sells some. I'm sorry I wasn't being clear enough. Give them to him. Now. Me. Getting annoyed. No. Surely you can afford to buy another pair. Pointing at my brand new iPhone and MacBook. Surely you can afford to buy your kid headphones. You have a designer purse. This gets the entitled mother annoyed. She calls over security and says, I stole her son's headphones. They initially believed her because, well, it was Mickey Mouse. I say I didn't and have had them the whole time. I show them the headphones and on the inside I have my name on it and I show them a selfie of me wearing them last year. Well, the security didn't believe her anymore and dealt with her. She hurled insults at me as she was being escorted away, one of which was calling me a cripple, referencing my wheelchair, to which I said, How does a cripple steal from you? You're so scary! I do not know what came of that entitled parent and her kid. So, backstory first, obviously. Every summer, my cousin moves to my house to work as a lifeguard. He makes a bunch of cash in that job, so, yeah. So, with the coronavirus, our president made a bunch of new rules when it applies to beach time. The rule that applies in this story is, if you want to play games, you can only play by yourself. Any games that involve two or more people are not allowed. So, this happened yesterday afternoon. By the way, I'm gonna tell the story like this is my cousin writing, so instead of so my cousin did this and that I'll write, I did this and that. Got it. Well, let's get to the story. I was walking on the sand doing a little patrolling when I saw a dad and his son. They were playing rackets. I have no idea how this translates to English, so don't blame me. And since the game involved one or more people, I had to tell them to stop. Cast. The entitled dad. Entitled. Son my cousin, and the policeman. So I walked to them. My cousin, sir, you need to stop playing rackets. It's against the law. Entitled, dad. And who are you to tell me what I can and what I can't do? A lifeguard. And you can't play that. It's, shut up. This isn't Halloween. Stop playing around pretending to be a lifeguard. Now, my cousin is a bit short. I'm just 15, 17 centimeters shorter than him. However, he's in his mid-twenties, so he damn sure has enough age to work there. Well, I am a lifeguard, and it's the law. You can't play rackets with your kid. Just get lost. All right, that's it. I'll give you one last chance to stop. If you don't, have luck dealing with the cops. As soon as he heard the word cops, he stopped. He turned to my cousin, looked him right in the eyes, red as a tomato, and began yelling, No, you're not. I am an adult, while you are a random kid with a fake beard. You have no notion of the law, so you can't order me around like you're my supervisor or something. If you don't get lost, I'm calling the cops. Entitled, Kid, Dad, just shut up. You heard the lifeguard. We can't. Shut up as well, or I'm throwing your PS4 off the window. Then the kid stopped talking. Now get lost, or I'm calling the cops on you. That's it. Good luck dealing with the police. I dialed 112, our emergency number, and the cops arrived in no time. Policeman, what is the problem here? He turns to me. Can you tell me your side of the story? My cousin, these two, points at the entitled parent and entitled son, were playing rackets. It's against the law to play a game that involves two or more people, right? So I went there to tell them to stop. When I did... He swore at me a lot and called me a kid, said I have no notion of the law and that I am pretending to be a lifeguard. Entitled, Parent, he's lying. He's pretending to be a lifeguard and tried to harass my son. Seriously, why do entitled parents go like he harassed my son or he stole my stuff? Policeman, sir, stop swearing. 
What the man just said is correct. It is against the law to play a game with two or more people. You shut up. They never said that in the newspaper. So it's nonsense. Nonsense, I say. My cousin, I am pretty sure that the police have a way better knowledge of the law than the newspaper editors. Shut up. You're faking as well. Then he tries to snatch the policeman's badge. He succeeds and throws it to the sea. Policeman. All right. That's it. It's clear that this young man is the one telling the truth. You're coming with me. Then, bam, he was charged with, I think, disturbance of the peace, lying to an officer, verbal assault, and something else I don't know. I think that's all to the story, because that's everything my cousin told my family. So, yeah, that's the end of the story. So, this has been my weekend week, guys. Friday night. Around 10.30 p.m., my mother-in-law texted my hubby, informing us she would be at the apartment to get the kids Saturday evening. This was worded as an F, why I... Not a request. At the time, she was informed that we have plans for Saturday evening, but she could get them Sunday if weather permitted. She argued this, but gave in. Saturday night comes, and the roads are not safe. Mixed snow and rain all day, with more in the forecast for Sunday husband texted my mother-in-law that the kids wouldn't be going anywhere because of the road conditions. She agreed that the roads were bad and we thought that was the end of it. Sunday, my husband went to work and the kids and I went about our normal weekend routine. Then at noon, my mother-in-law showed up on my porch informing me she was taking the kids and had the stuff to cut their hair, which had never been discussed. I reiterate that my husband had told her the kids were not leaving the house because the roads were not safe. She proceeded to scream at me that she can take the kids whenever she wants to because they are mine, I told her. Have a good day, then shut and lock the door. I then texted my husband to let him know what had gone on and to expect her to contact him. She sat in my parking lot for ten minutes screaming at him and then left. When she left, I called a friend to come over in case she came back before my husband got home from work. The day was going as normal until at 3 p.m. when someone tried to walk into the apartment without knocking and then began pounding on the door. My mother-in-law was back, knowing there was about five hours until my husband got home. I did not open the door. She started calling and texting my husband at work, telling him to call her or she would call the cops. He did not. About an hour before he got off, she texted him saying she had called and was waiting for them to arrive. My husband took a different route home, which allowed him to avoid walking past her car, and we went about our normal night, kids, bath, and bedtime since there was school the next day. She finally pulled out of the parking lot at 9.30 p.m., 6.5 hours after arriving, the texts and calls haven't stopped, and today she left my husband a voicemail threatening legal action if he doesn't call her and let her see the kids. We have removed her from all of the kids' information at their schools, in case she tries to go that route and are currently looking for a lawyer to make sure nothing happens. So I was at Walmart about two days ago because I was getting something from my dad. He's at high risk for this coronavirus going around but I had just gotten new Power Beats as a present from my girlfriend because I had been looking at them for some time. I was heading down an aisle because I needed to get some deodorant. I don't want to smell like garbage during this whole lockdown thing. While I was walking down the aisle, I saw that some bottles of shampoo had been knocked over and I decided to put them back so that way the employees could do more important stuff. Cue the entitled mother. I was listening to my music while I was putting stuff back so I didn't hear her call or let alone notice her up until she decided to yank my earbud out, which hurt a lot. Me. Ah. Hey, what's your deal, woman? Entitled mother. Maybe you shouldn't have your headphones on while you're working a job where you have to interact with people. Me. Sorry, but I don't work here. But you're stacking shampoo bottles, so you must work here? No. I'm just trying to help out. Now, please leave me alone. I wasn't in a very good mood at the time. I put my earbud back in my ear and she proceeds to yank it out again. For being so ignorant, you have to help me with my groceries. I tell her no, use some colorful language that I don't want to repeat, and I walk away to go grab the rest of the things I needed. 
While I'm at the register, scanning my items, I get a tap on the shoulder from a police officer. There's a police station just down the street from this Walmart, so they got there pretty quickly. Officer, young man, did you assault this woman? I tell him the whole ordeal and, in true entitled mother fashion, says I was lying to get out of trouble. Her son, who looked about 16, showed up and told the cop to look at the cameras to see what happened. We all went and did just that, the officer apologized. Her son told her that he was going to move and live with his dad, and the officer gave her a fine for making a non-urgent police call. So, no crazy ending, I guess, but at least she was put in her place. I'm a skater and a couple of weeks ago at the skate park, purpose-built and signposted as such, by the way, me and a couple of guys were hanging out and skating. We see a couple of kids learning to skate and offer to help them. No biggie. It's a regular occurrence. Anyways, a mother arrives with a toddler and sits herself down on the middle bank. She then takes out an RC car and drives it up and down the banks with her toddler crawling after it. I've been attempting a trick all day over a blind jump so I have guys spotting to make sure I'm not gonna come down on anyone. I get the all clear and go. As I leave the ramp, I see the toddler out of the corner of my eye and bail. My guys didn't see this kid coming. I end up coming down on the car narrowly missing the kid, skidding into another skater and getting badly injured. The entitled mother comes over and begins screaming that the skate park isn't meant for people like us and we're a danger to her child. She also wants us to pay for the toy car. I black out from my injuries, and my mates say that she continues screaming until the ambulance gets there, and when it does, she demands that her child be checked over first because she doesn't believe that I didn't hit him. My friends told her that, though there is no age limit on the skate park, it is just that. She complains that she has nearly been hit by flyaway boards and skaters were coming too close to her. The bank she was sitting on has good edges for grinding, sliding, and a rail, but the entitled mother continues to protest this statement, even as the paramedics attend to myself and the other skater. So since I quit my job, I will be posting my entitlement encounters here. During this specific day, I was called in on my day off because no one else was able to make it. There were three people, all minors, including me and the manager in the whole store. This takes place in the drive through Characters, entitled Parent Me and the Manager. Me, hello, welcome to restaurant. What can I get for you? Entitled parent ordered a lot of food and custom orders that are made on demand. Me. All right, I just wanted to let you know that your order will take some time as we are short-staffed and it is a big order with custom on-demand items. Whatever, I'm sure it'll be fine. The entitled parent pulls up to the window. I go over order and he's not paying attention to me. I tell him his total and he hands me a card. After I give it back, I'm taking the next car order. Manager, park this car. The drive through is full and his food is still eight minutes away from being ready. Me, hello, sir. Can we have you park out front and we will bring your order right to your car? It is taking a while as it is a custom order, but we should have it out shortly. Fine, but I want my drink already, the entitled parent says it with attitude and drives off. Me, well then, all right. I prepare the drink. Hey, manager, I'm going to take his drink out to him. He wanted it now. Okay, be careful. He sees me walking and gets out of the car. He snatches the drink from my hand, which startled me, and I jump back. Entitled Parent. I'm tired of all the waiting. I will be coming inside to make sure you idiots don't screw up my order. The parent follows me back inside the store. I say through the headset to my manager. Heads up, he's coming inside the store. Entitled Parent, can I get a manager here? What can I help you with? I'm the manager. Why is my order taking so long? It shouldn't be this long to put some chicken in the fryer. Manager, you did make a large custom order. Maybe if you and all those dumb kids you hired knew how to do your job, it wouldn't take this long. The manager looks around. It's me and three miners who can't go near the fryer, so don't yell at the children. Now you either go wait in your car or get a refund. Refund. The manager comes over to me by the drive-thru. Where is this jerk's receipt? 
The manager grabs it and walks away to give him the refund. The entitled parent grabs his card back and starts walking out, the drink I gave him still in hand. My manager says with sass, Excuse me, sir. Didn't you demand a refund? Put the drink down. The man slams the cup on the counter and walks out yelling profanities at us. Manager. Oh, thank God. I thought he was going to throw it at me. All right, my children, back to work. 